Hello, this time we're talking about signal parameters. Okay, uh, we're talking about signal parameters. We talked about digital signals. There are two things of how to transfer digital signals. One is parallel, it's called parallel. And one is called serial transfer. Parallel transfer means if I want to transfer one byte, yeah, if I want to transfer one byte, I'm using nine, let's say nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. Okay, why nine? One is ground. And other, the others are bit number one, a zero, bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four, bit five, bit six, bit seven, yeah? and so on. And on the other side, I have the same. And here, there is the transfer. Of the signal every bit on its own yeah so we need to be getting some on every line we have some pattern reflecting one byte after the other transferring yeah parallel data of whole byte is shifted in parallel yeah? on the other hand I have a serial communication I only have two lines, one is the data line, one is ground, ground is clear, this is the same, ground, ground, and on the data line I first set on byte number zero, then byte number one, bit number one, bit number two, bit number three, bit number four, and so on, one after the other goes on the data lines, this is the data, okay, one after the other, that is why the bits are transferred serial, yeah, so here needs to be some, something, some logic, yeah, needs to be, which is transferring one byte, stacking and multiplexing this to the line, and on the other hand, I also need something which is then serving the bytes to the slots of the serving the bits to the slots of the byte and after the byte is ready shifts further. Yeah? So in here serial I need to have some logic. Yeah? Parallel speed speed. Disadvantage, more cables, more wires, more cables. Yeah? Disadvantage, the thing is, those cables, they are not alone. Those wires, the single lines, they are not alone. They're usually in a thick cable. Yeah? And if two wires are going parallel over a prolonged way, yeah, or a prolonged way, then whatever is on here will also be a little bit on here and also be a little bit on here. So we have some we have some coupling between the lines. Yeah? And we have some coupling between the lines and if the line is getting really long, yeah, this coupling is strong enough to disturb the communication. Yeah? So here we have limited length yeah. just some meters just meters just some meters yeah this is the parallel thing depending on the frequency here high frequency parallel bus for parallel systems they have just centimeters yeah. and here the big advantage here is 
only two cables. Uh, can be transferred right, transferred over over kilometers if necessary. Kilometers is already a little bit exotic, but far further than here. Yeah. The disadvantage is yeah, slower. And we need some logic to function. Uh, these things here. We need these things here that this is working. Parallel, serial. Both parts are still in use. Yeah? This is in use where it does not need to be very far but very fast. This is in use where it needs to be far than some meters, than two meters, three meters. Yeah? This is used in field bus technology. This is usually used in parallel bus technology inside the computer, for instance, uh, between the memory and the CPU. Uh, these are parallel buses where yeah? there the data transfer is high. Yeah? Serial buses, serial bus systems are for longer time, for longer communication. For instance, Ethernet. Yeah? Serial bus system in the PC, Ethernet. Typical. Parallel serial communication. Yeah. Then we do have the terms of, of uh, which color do I use? Green. Ah, green is already here. I ah, use orange. Orange is good. Simplex. Then we have we have half duplex. And then we have full duplex. What does it mean? Simplex, there's a dedicated sender and a dedicated receiver. The communication is just in one direction. Okay? Half duplex means every communication partner can talk or listen, yeah? but not at the same time. Yeah? And full duplex means every communication partner can talk and listen even at the same time. Yeah? So maybe uh, <laughs> This would be the ideal conversation between two humans. Yeah? One is listening, yeah? one is telling something, and then the other one is telling and the other one is listening. This is half duplex. Yeah? If we get into a fight, if we get into a fight, then we have full duplex. Yeah? Both are listening and talking at the same time. Yeah? Shouting maybe to each other and listening what the other one is shouting and shouting to itself full duplex communication yeah and then at one point in time one of the partners is getting really stressed out and is shutting up and then only one is talking and texting the other one yeah this is then simplex <laughs> okay yeah simplex half duplex full duplex communication in full duplex so many communication here in serial mode, we usually have a trans a transmit line and a receive line, so we have three lines. Yeah, just made it pointy, and right here for full duplex. Usual for full duplex. One is transmit and one is receive, and usually they are crossed to each other. Yeah. Communication, art of communication. Then we do have a distinction between if, if there is one communication partner and there is the other communication partner. Yeah. And there is one connection between them, only one. Yeah. This can be simplex, half duplex or full duplex, does not really matter, but there is one point and there is the other point in communication. This is called a point to point.
point-to-point -point communication. Okay? They have exclusively, they have one line to each other and they can talk to each other. Yeah? The cold war, this was the red phone. Yeah? The red phone, if the American president wanted to call the uh, president of the USSR, he just has to pick up the receiver and then he has not to dial a number. Hey, hey, what's the number of the USSR? No. Red phone was a point-to-point -point communication. Okay, Point-to-point -point communication. Then there is the possibility that there are several communication partners yeah? and all of them are sharing one communication device. Yeah? They are sharing one communication device yeah? And this communication device is called a bus. Yeah? So a bus communication device usually means there are more partners which can talk at the same at the same communication device. Yeah? There can there are parallel buses, yeah? parallel buses. For instance, like I've mentioned in our computer, the parallel bus between the memory the CPU, the graphics GPU and so on, there are several communication partners which transfer their data over this parallel bus. Yeah? And there are serial buses, for instance, uh, field buses, where this is, I don't know, a PLC, uh, automation station, a sensor and so on, and everybody can place its communication on this serial bus. Of course, you have to take care somehow who is talking and who is listening. This is then depending on the bus, on the type of bus you are using. But basically that's that's bus system. So there are parallel bus system like PCI bus, SCSI bus for instance. There are serial bus systems uh, like usually field bus systems or Ethernet. Ethernet is also a serial bus system. How sensors are cabled or how, how communication measurement devices are cabled? A lot of things are cabled that way. So there is one measurement station and this has point-to-point -point connections to every sensor. Yeah. Advantage of this system is that every sensor can be measured individually yeah? and maybe can be coded also individually. I've just before, video before, I think I've mentioned the HART protocol. Yeah? The HART protocol, HART means Highway Addressable Random Transducer, yeah? Highway Addressable Random Transducer. So if here, this is usually a 4 to 20 milliampere signal. Yeah. Yeah. This is the base. Yeah. And then there is a frequency on this 4 to 20 milliampere signal where, uh, so the, the frequency is then plus minus 0 0.5 milliamps going up and down very fast. Yeah, much faster than the usual. There we come again to the, to the, uh, limit frequency and filtering stuff and so on we've discussed in another video but on this hard protocol we have a high frequency of plus minus 0.5 milliamps around the current value yeah and if this high frequency is a frequency a frequency of one to two kilohertz yeah this is a one and if this frequency is 2.2 kilohertz then this is a zero this would be the modulation so you can transfer even digital data over analog data and you can transfer maybe from your device to your measurement sensor some con configuration data or something like this. Yeah. This is then point to point with hard. That's very common. Hard 4 to 20 milliamps is very common. Yeah. Still very common. Yeah. Because, like I said, the big advantage is the electrician of the of the unit of the machine of the company is coming there with this measurement device opening the line 
measuring the signal sees if this is plausible or not. Yeah. However, there's big cabling effort. Yeah. But a lot of times it's just a refit or something like this and the cables are already there. Yeah. The cables are already there. This makes this hard especially interesting because you can use the old cables and, uh, and code the and use new transducers yeah, and can even program them from a local point so you have somehow a point-to-point -point connection with a little bit communication above it yeah. intelligent sensors then usually we have them on the bus yeah. they are just members on the bus you you add them to a bus you add a new temperature sensor add them to profi bus or even that communicate it doesn't really matter yeah add them to the bus and it's sending already its data on request maybe or from its own it's up to you it's up to the thing yeah then you just have to care, take care that the maximum number of allowed uh, participants on the bus is not ex, ex exceeded yeah that's the word i'm looking for that the maximum number of of, of participants is not exceeded this you have to take care but, I mean, these are two wires, right? The cabling is much less. That's the big, big, big advantage. When it comes to communication, it depends a little bit where you are on very low levels. So if you're very close to the process, yeah, very close to the process, you need to react in milliseconds. Yeah? Then this communication has to be really, really fast. Yeah? But usually those elements which are very process close, close to the process, yeah, they, are, they have to deal with not that big amount of data. So you can transfer it very fast, yeah? like I said, milliseconds. The higher you get in the, in the hierarchy, yeah? so I don't know, if there are several machines and I want to see the data of this and that machine, okay then i have to wait one two seconds yeah until i get the data it's no issue yeah then the transfer of data might be a little bit slower and if i'm at the top of my company then it takes minutes and even hours until i get the data yeah until all this data is gathered somewhere mixed in some software and presented to me it takes a little bit time yeah. so depending very close to the process i react in milliseconds at the presentation layer let's say i react i react in in seconds above it does not really matter it's maybe minutes yeah. that's it for the for the time constraint okay Next time, next time, we want to talk about uh, field bus systems. Okay, for this time, I think that's enough for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.